What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for checking the video out. If you enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button. It helps me out so, so much. As you guys know, YouTube absolutely hates this channel. We are constantly getting freaking striked and videos deleted and demonetized and just suppressed in all forms. It's insane. So if you guys could hit that like button to help me fight against this YouTube algorithm that just hates us so much, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm also really trying to push my content onto other platforms. Uh, so not only would you guys be able to have more platforms to watch the videos on than just YouTube, but also that way I'm not quite so reliant on YouTube because so, again, they just hate us for whatever reason. So I'll have the link down in the description to my Spotify account as well as the Patreon account. If you guys could go down to those links and check those out, it'd be greatly appreciated. Leave me a, a review or whatever on Spotify and follow me over there that would help me out a lot but anyway guys enough of me blabbering on thank you so much again for checking out the video your guys' support means the world to me none of this would be possible at all without you dudes so seriously thank you guys so much but anyway let's get into today's video june 14th 2012 a marine special operations team with first marine special operations battalion was conducting village stability operations in helmand province afghanistan but on the morning of the 14th the team was in a village compound when it came under heavy enemy fire as soon as the ambush kicked off, the team leader and one other Marine who were on the roof of the compound were severely wounded and left stranded on top of the building. Sergeant Ryan Pass was able to quickly reach the wounded Marines stranded on the roof by scaling a ladder on the side of the building and then crawling his way across the roof to their position to provide first aid. Pass then began engaging the enemy from the roof with his M249 squad automatic weapon. But Pass knew he needed to get these men off of the roof. So in between bursts from his M249, he would slowly drag the wounded Marines closer and closer to the ladder. Meanwhile, Christopher Buckminster exposed himself to enemy fire as he verified targets and marked their position. And Gunnery Sergeant Brian Jacklin began organizing a counterattack and casualty evacuation. Jacklin contacted a nearby supporting unit and coordinated air, direct, and indirect fire support. But he knew he needed to get those wounded Marines out of here immediately if they were going to survive. So he found a good landing zone nearby where they would be able to load the wounded Marines into a helicopter and get them out of here. But there were two issues with the landing zone. The first being that it was on the other side of a large open field. The second being that there were enemies in the landing zone. So not only would they have to carry the wounded Marines across an open field, but they would also have to clear the landing zone before they could get the wounded Marines. So Jacqueline quickly grabbed a handful of his teammates and asked them, does anybody have a problem with risking it to get these guys out of here? Because if we don't, they are going to die. But the operators all immediately agreed to risk it for their brothers. So the operators ran across the open field under heavy enemy fire the entire way and quickly secured the landing zone, clearing it of all enemy fighters. But now with the landing zone secure, some of the men would have to go back across the open field to retrieve the wounded Marines. So Buckminster, Staff Sergeant Hussein, and Gunnery Sergeant William Simpson ran back across the open field under heavy enemy fire to where the wounded marines were located. Once they reached the side of the compound, Pass, who was still on top of the roof with the wounded marines, was able to start slowly lowering the two wounded marines down to his teammates on the ground. And once they got the wounded marines on the ground, Navy Petty Officer First Class Jordan Walker, the team's corpsman, arrived to quickly stabilize the wounded men so they could survive transport to the evacuation site. As this was happening, the enemy continued their aggressive assault of the compound, closing within a hundred meters of the Marine's position. Buckminster, Hussein, Pass, and Simpson then carried the casualties across the open field to the landing zone. But once they reached the landing zone, the enemy continued to press its assault. And the landing zone provided little to no cover for the Marines. So the operators positioned themselves between the enemy 
and their wounded, using themselves as human shields to protect their brothers. As the helicopters approached the landing zone to evacuate the wounded, the Marines and supporting units fought to secure the landing zone, with Jacqueline raining M203 grenades on the enemy and directing the fire of his team until the landing zone was secured. After the casualties were safely evacuated, the remaining Marines continued fighting well into the night. And when their relief finally arrived, Jacqueline and Sergeant David E. Harris volunteered to stay behind and help. The two Marines carried on their fight for the next 24 hours. For his bravery and composure under fire, Jacqueline was awarded the Navy Cross, and Buckminster, Harris, Hussein, Simpson, and Staff Sergeant William Hall were awarded the Bronze Star Medal for Valor. It was a crazy long gunfight for everyone involved, but the two Marines that volunteered to stay behind and help Jacqueline and Harris were in that gunfight for over 48 hours straight, which is just crazy. I can't even I can't even begin to imagine how exhausted you would be after being in a heavy gunfight for 48 hours straight. And that is it for the first story of the video, guys. I do have another Marsoc story for you, though, so let's go on ahead and jump into that. April 25th, 2013, Petty Officer First Class Kevin Baskin, a Navy corpsman with 3rd Marine Special Operations Battalion, set out with his team on a mission to the Kush village in Herat province, Afghanistan. Baskin's team began taking sporadic fire as soon as they reached one of their checkpoints. The team identified two separate groups of attackers moving into fighting positions, and as the mission continued, Baskin's team became pinned down behind a cemetery wall. Thankfully though, one of Baskin's teammates was carrying a 60mm mortar. He was able to quickly get it set up and begin sending rounds downrange. He unfortunately wasn't carrying a whole lot of rounds for the 60, but it was enough to suppress the enemy. So once he ran out, the Marine quickly ran to a wall about 50 meters in front of their position. But when he peeked up over the wall to begin engaging the enemy, he was shot. And as soon as Baskin saw his teammate drop without any hesitation, he ran to his side and began providing desperately needed first aid. Thankfully, Baskin was able to stabilize the wounded Marine and began directing his evacuation. But while he was working on evacuating his teammate, Baskin was shot in the back. But Baskin knew he needed to evacuate his wounded Marine immediately so he could get more medical aid. So he completely ignored his own injuries and turned his attention to the enemy, returning accurate fire on the enemy's position and suppressing the enemy long enough for his teammates to get to the wounded marine and evacuate him from the kill zone. His actions are credited with saving the lives of at least four marines. And for his bravery under fire, Baskin was awarded the Silver Star, the third highest award for valor. And just two years later, Baskin would receive his second Purple Heart after being hit by a rocket-propelled grenade while on a deployment with 2nd Marine Special Operations Battalion. During a ceremony, Baskin said, I am proud to be receiving an award like this. I felt like I was just doing my job, what anyone else on the team would have done if put into the situation. During the award ceremony, the commander of U.S. Marine Corps Special Operations Command spoke to Baskin's character and selflessness under fire, saying, if you look across battlefields throughout history, there is always that one ringing slogan that you see and hear throughout, and that is Corman up. Baskin went forward without thought of himself to the point of protecting his fellow Marines with his own body. And with that, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. Thank you so much for checking it out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, dudes, thank you so much for all your support. It seriously means the world to me. If you guys could hit that like button and share the video with a friend to help me make sure as many people as possible get to hear these incredible stories, I would really, really appreciate it. But I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. I really, really do. And I appreciate every last one of you dudes. Getting to share these stories every day is the biggest honor. I, I can't even begin to express how much it means to me getting to honor these American heroes through the sharing of their stories on this platform. It is 
it is a huge blessing and I am forever thankful to every one of you dudes that listens to the videos and hits that like button and just supports me in any way. It seriously means the world to me. You guys are the best. But with all that guys, I hope y'all have a fantastic day and I will see you all in the next video.